this is the 44 year old switch panel it's original to the boat and it still works it's got a couple of issues starting with that fuse at the very top for the running lights i can make it work but it's a pain it keeps wanting to pop out and i suppose i could replace it but really i think it's time to replace the electrical panel hi jim's little boat i'm jim and I just showed you that tired old electrical switch panel in my boat, and I think it's time to change it. I should start by saying, as I usually do, if there's a video available, I looked at the uh, one that comes from Catalina Direct, and it's okay. It's not great, it's not terrible. Uh, if you know how to do it, you don't need it, and if you don't know how to do it, I'm not 100% sure that you could learn how from watching the video. But in any case, uh, we'll go out there and do that. There's all kinds of resources on the internet about how to do this, and I'll just run through mine. It might be redundant. It might make you feel better about working on your own boat. Let's Most importantly, it. we've got the switch panel itself, and it's got uh, a number of switches, and they are also the fuses. They're circuit breakers, and then it's got master switches on each side. Let's flip it over and look on the back. Okay, we've got two master switches. The top one controls all these functions that are labeled, and the bottom switch controls that, and all of that will get tied together to the positive side of the battery with a uh, adequate cable. I'll probably use uh, number eight and take it all the way back to the battery, or at least over to the bus bar that I have in there. They also include some spade connectors and some connectors and little numbers so that you can identify and label all the wires as you tear this apart. That will be very important. They included a bus bar. That's gonna be for all the negative stuff, the negative connections. And I may not need these because I've already got bus bars in there for most of the connections in the boat. Let's just kind of look at what we're trying to accomplish here. We have the big battery in the boat and we have a 30 amp fuse and all the red wires are from the positive side of the battery. And then we have the negative side of the battery and all the black wires are connected to that using this bus bar over here. So this is the negative side of the circuit. On the positive side of the circuit, the red wire goes to those two big switches we looked at and that turns on the regular things and the auxiliary part of the panel. And that all goes to four or five switches over there. All of these switches are also circuit breakers, fuses in effect. So when we close this circuit and we close this circuit, the current flows to, let's say, a running light bulb, for example, and completes the circuit and comes back here to the bus bar. So our goal today is to cut these wires that already exist, get rid of those, and then connect them back to the correct switches. So we're going to have to do some labeling to make sure we don't screw up. Just made up a little three by five card here. Uh, the sketch is to remind me that the hole has to be four and a half inches wide and six inches high. And that's gotta be pretty tight because you need room for the screws. And then I just labeled the positions for the switches. I'm not using the accessory switches at all because I have that whole sub panel uh, mounted on the hole liner up above the table. So I have plenty of switches in this case and I will not be using the anchor light number three position because I don't have an anchor light. I've gone ahead and taken the screws out of the panel and it's right there. I need to disconnect the battery. I mean, I've done some dumb stuff in my life, but there's no need to connect this while it's hot. This is a boat, not a car. So I went ahead and disconnected the positive side. There's the wire laying there. Notice some red tape on there to make sure it's a red theme all the way through. Double check the battery, it's positive, it's disconnected. We can go ahead and work on the switch. Now that the power is disconnected, I'll go ahead and cut these switches off. And starting with the second one, because that's really the cabin lights, and that's the number one switch on the new panel. My situation may be a little bit different than yours. I have these two negatives. I'm not quite sure what they do. They provided a negative for the pilot light on the master panel. And I suspect the other one just returns to a bus bar or to the battery connection. I'll have to check that out. And then I've got the main supply line, which is this little number eight wire. And I just put number eight on there because it's not on the list of switches. But I think I'll replace that with a heavier wire. Maybe not necessary. These are all low draw circuits, but we'll see.
So switch panels out. Uh, we have an opportunity here to get rid of a couple of these crappy wire nuts that were put in by somebody before me, obviously. And sitting right over here, I have my little card that tells me what's what. So I think the next thing to do is go ahead and make this hole bigger. It's not quite big enough. I'll use a vibrating saw for that, I think. Dinked around with this a little bit, and it looks like four and a quarter by six is going to be a better size for the hole. So now I have a template I can take out there and uh, recut the hole. When it comes to a plunge cut, this vibrating saw beats the heck out of a jigsaw every time. <laughs> So, got a nice neat hole, need to reposition the switch, drill some holes for the screws, fill the old holes and clean up that mess that some previous owner left with glue or caulking or whatever it was. As it turned out, the hole wasn't square, so I brought out a small framing square and drew a line and just cleaned it up with the vibrating saw. So now it sits in there nicely. The four screws they supply are short, but they are long enough to mount the panel. I'll need to put some marine checks or something in those holes, so the next thing to do is uh, take the panel back out and go ahead and do the wiring part of this job. We're putting the spade connectors on there. Unfortunately, they're not heat shrinks. I don't have any. And you need a crimping tool. They're not very expensive. You can pick one up at any home center. We hooked up the uh, primary power supply down there to the bus bar between the two big switches, and we have hooked up the spade connectors so it's time to put this back together and see if it works yeah. batteries hooked back up let's try the cabin lights oh by golly they work well gosh that's kind of nice we got the whole job done in a couple hours on a rainy Saturday afternoon I uh, am going to keep the switch panel even though it's worthless in case somebody with an old panel wants one of these uh, tubes fuse tube sockets the other thing I didn't use was the bus bar, but I'm sure I'll find a use for that later. I think if I had known six years ago when I started working on the wiring on this boat that I was going to redo the whole thing, I probably would have just stripped it all out and started over. As it is, I did it a piece at a time, and I'm down to one wire nut, and I don't know why it's there, so I'm just going to leave it. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, everything seemed to work. I'll be glad I did it when we take off at 3 a.m. for uh, Gig Harbor on one of our summer cruises when you'll need to sail for 12 hours, so we're going to leave early that day. It's not a bad job. You can do this. Uh, thanks for watching. See you on the water.